This video is on transcription. So we learned in the last video that protein synthesis was reading the code in your DNA and slowly turning it into a protein at the other end. So this is made up of the first part, reading the DNA called transcription, and the second part, turning the message into a protein, which is called translation. This video is gonna focus on the first part, transcription. So we're gonna go right into detail. Everything's gonna be on this slide. The idea isn't very complex. The idea is just that your DNA gets read and turns into a message. But you're gonna to have to remember all of the terms. That's the tricky part. The first term you need to know. You need to know that the template that it goes onto, the message is called mRNA, standing for messenger RNA. So how the whole process works is that a protein called RNAP unwinds your DNA so it separates the two strands so T gets separated from A and C gets separated from G. Then there's going to be a start code. Somewhere along this DNA structure there'll be a set of three bases which tells this protein to start here. Third, you're going to have an end section as well. Once it's started and the DNA has told it start here to read for a protein, there's also going to be a little code which says end here to stop making a protein because proteins are only a finite length. They don't keep going on forever and ever. Now you need to remember that in DNA we had A was paired with T for the bases and C was paired with G. Now this is the same except in mRNA when you're writing that. If you have an A on the DNA strand, it's going to copy that and instead of copying it to have a T, a complementary T, it replaces it with U because U can be transported more easily than T. So that's one thing you're going to need to know when you're talking about mRNA. T is replaced with U. What actually happens here is the mRNA comes along, it will see a C and it might match it with a G or it'll see a G and match it with a C. Alternatively, it might come along and see an A and it won't match it with a T, it'll match it with a U or it could see a T and it will match it with an A. So that's how the messenger actually codes in with the strand. So we're going to need to know some names for that. The strand which is being read is called the template strand because this is a template for the mRNA to copy. So that's the template strand. And then up the top is called the complementary strand. And that's because if you imagine there's a C down the very bottom here, mRNA is going to copy that with a G, a complementary G which is actually exactly the same as what this top complementary strand of DNA already has in it. So mRNA is going to be exactly the same as the complementary strand, except T will have been exchanged for U. So this process of it being unwound, it finding a place to start, the DNA has a code for start, then there's a place for it to end as well, a code on the DNA to stop the protein making. You need to know that there's a template strand, so one strand gets read by the mRNA, so the mRNA matches that one, and there's a complementary DNA strand. That's the other side of the DNA strand, which looks the same as mRNA, except that T is swapped with U. So this is everything you need to know for transcription. So let's cover that in a summary here. And I've just got a different diagram to show this and reinforce the message. One, mRNA is messenger RNA. It's a message which is going to be taken right out of the nucleus into the cell so you can make a protein. There's a protein or an enzyme that's already made called RNAP, which unwinds the protein so that you can read one side or another. In this case, you're reading the bottom strand here. Now there is a start code which tells the protein when to start making messenger RNA, mRNA. And there's an end code which tells the protein when to stop making mRNA. There's also a template strand. So in this case, it's the bottom strand. The bottom strand is what mRNA is getting matched against. So T here is getting matched with A, a is getting matched with U, remember T has been replaced here. And then there's a complementary strand, which as you'll see, is actually exactly the same as the mRNA, except that U and T have been switched out. And that's our final point that we need to remember. So hopefully this is clear about how the message is created from DNA, so that then it can be taken out into our cells. Let's look at a question now. So here we have part of a sequence of DNA and mRNA down here. So at the top we've got strand 1 and strand 2 of our DNA, and in the bottom we've got mRNA. So what we need to do is complete the sequence above here, and then we're going to need to state which strand of the DNA is the template strand, and then also we can work out which is the complementary strand, and we'll explain our answer. So first off, we're going to match up the DNA with each other. We're going to do the complementary basis. Remember C and G are always matched up here and here, and A and T are always matched up. That's how we can work it out. The problem is we don't know how to do a complementary match when we don't have any information. So that's when we're going to look at the mRNA. 
So down here we can see A is A, so it looks like this bottom one is the complementary strand because it's the same in the A and the A and the A and the A here and the T and the U because it's just been replaced. And it looks like the top will be the template strand. So here we can make this DNA exactly the same as the mRNA except exchange a U for a T. And then up the top we can know we'll match the remaining ones. T goes with A, T goes with A, C goes with G. And again with mRNA we just worked out before that it's the same as this bottom strand so that's the complementary strand so we can just copy it except replacing T with U. So that's how we've filled in the gaps here. Now we need to go to part B which is stating which strand is the template strand and we need to explain our answer. So we already used that to figure out our answer. The template strand remember is not the one that's the same, it's the one that gets read, it's the opposite looking strand. So the mRNA here is A, so we want to do the matching strand, which is T. So it's the top one, strand one. In our answer, we want to say that the DNA template strand is the one with complementary bases to this mRNA that's being produced. So there is no thymine, there's no T in RNA. It's been replaced with U. Hopefully you've got that by now. And so the pairing for DNA to mRNA are A to U and C to G. So template strand is one because T has been matched with A, A has been matched with U, just like we've explained here. And that is the process of transcription.